we've had a lot of storms, our intense weather. We're getting these gust fronts and just these outbursts. So even though we might not have a lot of rain around there, wind is really coming through and playing havoc. It seems like no matter where you go in the state. Case in point here, see a lot of images like this where I'll get them in there. They'll say, can my tree be saved? In this case here, no. Uh, it's uh, That wound is just too big and too much. That uh, probably was a tree that should have been correctively pruned back when it was about two or three years old. So the main thing is for storm damaged trees, uh, I have three things really up front. You want to be patient. Trees are resilient and may recover with proper care and time. And we'll talk about that here in a sec. Be safe. No chainsaw safety. If you haven't experienced around with a chainsaw, this is not the time to start. You want to make sure that even if you do have experience, that you're working with both feet on the ground, not off of a ladder, definitely not off a ladder. And also be aware a lot of times too, if the limb is partially broken off and bent over, or if you had a tree that has come down onto another tree, that's a lot of stored up energy that's might be in that, what we call spring poles to things. Also too, you know, if it's really intense, I know St. Louis has been hammered, it seems like North or South St. Louis with a lot of these storms in the last two weeks, a lot of down power lines. You just definitely don't want to be out there until after the utility crews clear that it's safe to be trying to remove the uh, debris. You'll also want to make sure, again, safety, you know, triaging, if you will. Those trees that are a hazard to your home or hazard to walkway or something, those are the areas you want to pay attention to first to have the trees corrected or the uh, risk removed. Lastly, don't be a victim of a scam. I mean, determine if they are a legitimate company. You know, if they call or come by, ask them for their proof of insurance. And even if they show you a certificate, make sure it's got the contact information of the insurer or ask if they can't give you that or give you an excuse you don't even want them. The best way to do it is just go through and find a certified arborist. A number of them out there, you can go out to the International Society of Arboriculture's website and they've got to find an arborist and you can put in your zip code and that's a real good way to get information. Uh, granted, they might be covered up after a storm event, but again, uh, be patient. Uh, that's the best way to go. So real quick, again, assessing the damage, you know, has a tree been basically healthy? Are major limbs broken? Uh, has the main leader, the main stem been, been lost? In that case of that image, the, uh, the first one, you know, over half the tree had been lost and you could argue it might still be a central stem, but it's really not recoverable. And like I say there in the case, at least 50% of the crown was lost or so it wouldn't be salvageable. How big are those wounds? Like you see here, when you have something, I, I don't even recommend pruning trees with a larger than a two inch diameter branch, because again, the tree can't, in this case of this image here, it really can't heal itself over. You're really going to have, uh, you know, the issue here is basically healthy. This is, I imagine, it looks like a Bradford pear, maybe, where you have all of those vertical stems. You got all of those vertical included bark between those stems, and that just sets itself up for failure in a, in a windstorm. You know, are there branches that can form a new branch structure? I'll show you a few examples here. Also, is the tree in the right place? Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Uh, maybe that tree was planted too close to the house to begin with, and uh, now it's just time to rip the Band-Aid off and go ahead and put a tree in the right place, you know, further from the house, or maybe it was a tree that wasn't really matched for living in full sun or on the north side of your home, something of that nature. Making a decision. So going from left to right here, when you have a few branches uh, that are broken out, yeah, you, you'll probably want to keep it. That'll be where the arborist will come in and correctively prune down to a branch union. They know how to do that. And so that's what you want to keep. That middle one, though, that wait and see. So now you've got significantly more branches that are damaged. And again, the rule of thumb there is about 50% of the crown. And that's really kind of just flip a coin on that one. But then you have the ones uh, on the right there replacing. If the, if the top's been broken out or in the case of those previous examples where you've lost, uh, you know, that vertical crack has now split the tree open and uh, you've lost 
more than half a tree that way, or that wound is just so big, it's not going to be able to heal itself. So those are really good examples of keep, think about it, or definitely take it out. Uh, basic tree care, you want to resist the urge to over prune. Uh, you don't want to do that. Removing broken branches that are still attached to the tree, those are the ones you go for. Repairing torn bark, if you can. Uh, you see in that image there to the left, the three steps to properly remove that branch. Hopefully, you know, you've got something there that the branch hasn't ripped down along the trunk, but you make a first undercut because the bark is still slipping now. And so you make that undercut about a quarter, third of the way through the branch. Then you go up in your second cut a little bit further out from there and straight down. That way, the weight of that branch, uh, when it starts to go, if it does tear, that first cut's going to stop it from doing more damage. And then the third cut is outside of that bark. That's what we call the donut, where a branch attaches to a larger branch or to the trunk of the tree. You want to stay just on the outside of that because that's the natural healing zone, much like a leaf falling from a tree in the fall. Uh, they fall naturally. That'll create a nice place for the tree to heal naturally. No pruning paint, uh, no wound dressing, anything of that nature. Definitely, you don't want to top your tree. Back to the pruning paint. The only time I recommend that is in the case of if you've got a red oak that is susceptible to oak wilt, which right now we're in the peak of oak wilt season, if you will. And there you will want to put a physical barrier, that tree wound paint, to uh, prevent the beetles from transmitting. You know, they're going to come being attracted to the sap flow. Uh, they're not the cause of the damage. They carry a fungus, though, that gets then into the vascular system of the tree. So, but pruning, nope, just uh, like the old wives' tale, putting butter on a burn, better to let the wound, you know, the burn heal naturally. Same thing in the case of a tree. Storm damaged trees, this is one that looks like we've had some uh, a wind event or a tornadic event. Looks like there's some twist up going there. That one's lodged up high. Is that something that needs to be taken care of? Well, if you've got a picnic table underneath there, eventually, probably you might want to, you know, have an arbors come up. That one, I would kind of leave for right now. That tree is in the back of a woods line. That's a lower priority than, say, something that's uh, over your carport or over your front or back porch. Here's a smoke tree. Looks like, again, in a wind event. Looking at it from the front on the left, and now you come along on the backside, and you can see where uh, a significant part was already taken out. And so do you take out that one on the right? and try to let that one on the left go because again you can see that in that image on the left the right side of the tree yeah it's kind of hanging in there i don't know that's a 50 50 call for me i'd probably take it out just because i had a smoke tree like that between our home and our neighbors and wind came through and took out half of it and i tried to save it and it was just better to go ahead and get a new one and then do the corrective pruning early on this is an obvious case Smoke trees like to do that, but you try to get a central stem as best you can. Storm damaged tree. So this is a big chunk that came out. This was a quite a wind event. That tree that that top branch came out of is actually to the right of that parking area. So it was kind of that homeowner was blessed that it didn't land on their railing and they have to mess with uh, replacing it. But I circled these areas. And if you look really at them, you'll see a white ring and then you'll see a dark center. So this tree is already compromised. This is a, a hollow tree in the making. And so I point this out is because trees are very resilient. I mean, you don't see, you know, on the news, you see these trees that have been broken off. And you go, wow, why didn't it break? Well, when a tree, you know, gets whatever kind of disease decay inside, there is the fourth wall, if you will, it will actually heal itself over and you'll have this shell of good wood that's completely surrounding the rotten area here in the case of along the branch. And I can just see from the breaking there on the right, the tree was able to hold itself up until finally, you know, and strong enough wind, full leaf canopy, like a big old sail, and then it just gave. So Main thing is, though, again, just be safe, get a certified arborist, and don't use any chainsaws over your head, and be aware if a tree has fallen on another tree or a smaller tree. I've seen uh, logging accidents, homeowner uh, accidents, where folks have been severely injured, if not killed in a couple of cases, by releasing that energy on a one-inch diameter 
what we call that spring pole and them not uh, knowing which way that tree or that branch is going to go when that energy is released. <laughs> 